Do Not Age has kindly provided a 10% discount for all their products to our audience with the code Modern Healthspan. Thank you for your support. So how do you, how would you measure your health? How would you think about it? Would your epigenetic age be the kind of the measure? It's like, yes, I'm, I'm doing a good job. Or would you look at your blood markers or what would you look at? Or would you look at all of them? Yeah, I think, again, it's about aggregating the data and trying to look at as many different points as you can. But, you know, things like the epigenetic age, I haven't taken one of those tests for quite a long time. So I, I tend to focus on the pillars that make up that result, you know. So, in my, again, this is just a, a personal opinion, but I believe looking after those individual pillars, whether it's removing senescent cells, controlling CD38, boosting NAD, uh, activating sirtuins, reducing my stress, protecting my telomeres, reducing my inflammation, then the epigenetic age will look after itself. That's my opinion. Right. I was going to ask whether you'd, you'd taken an epigenetic age test. So you have, but not for, not for a while. Yeah, I think it's been over a year now. Yeah, it's been well been well over a year. So I, I still test my NAD level regularly. Um, I, I like I like the simplicity of that, and because I understand how powerful having a healthy NAD level is, um, and how how much of an upstream cause of aging it is, uh, I'm very I'm very much on top of that. Right? Have you tested your? I mean, there, there isn't a very good one, but have you tested your senes senescent cells? No, so the, the way that senescent cell tests work is through uh, the measuring the inflammatory markers. And again, that's something that we're trying to develop a at-home test kit for so people can do it easily. Um, but yeah, we're that's still in the process. And as I mentioned before, things like that take a very long time because you want to make sure you get it right. There's no point having a test if the results can be variable or inaccurate in any way. Um, so yeah, I think that's probably going to be over a year before that's ready. Yes, uh, that wouldn't surprise me. If you had to pick three supplements for longevity, I, I assume that you take a fair, 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 fairly wide variety of supplements. Being yes. the CEO, being the CEO of Do Not Age mm. So, but if you had to pick three, right, you're only allowed three. What would those three be? That's like having ten children and being asked which seven you want to kill. <laughs> um, it's not that drastic, but. <laughs> <laughs> so I think the first two are very very easy cert 6 activator and NMN mm -hmm. again just basing that on the data and, and, and the more than 100,000 members that we have that are taking these things and seeing the impact it has uh, things like cert 6 activator for example I don't think we're going to see the full extent of just how powerful it is for probably 10 years and then down the line we're going to see those that were taking it what kind of help there in it's going to be incredible that's my opinion third one oh i'll go with sulfora boost it's it's very difficult to choose but i'll go with sulfora boost so increasing the amount of sulforaphane in your system which uh, obviously has a ton of benefits so hopefully that answers the question so it's six activator nmn sulfora boost interesting so actually could you talk a little bit about sulfora boost because uh, I am mm. not, it's not one that I'm very familiar with. Oh, right. Okay. So it took us a long time, a lot of research to uh, create Sulfora Boost. Essentially, it's the most powerful sulforaphane boosting ingredient in the world. It mixes uh, glucoraphanin with myrosinase. So myrosinase is an enzyme that is needed to turn uh, when these two mix together inside the gut. Then that's what creates sulforaphane. Because if you have just pure sulforaphane, it's very unstable, doesn't last very long outside the body. So you have to have both those ingredients uh, mixed together inside the gut. Um, and then from a sulforaphane perspective, I don't know if you've spoken about it before on the channel, but essentially it does look to do things like kill cancer cells. Obviously we're not making any claims here, but um, uh, activates the NRF2 pathway. So boosts the glutathione. There's a lot of benefits from sulforaphane. If anyone is hanging around on YouTube, which I'm assuming they are if they're watching this, yes. then they should check out uh, Rhonda Patrick. There was a lot of work was done by Jed Fahey and she actually interviews him on her channel. Mm -hmm. And that's really, really interesting to watch. Do you, you take a senes uh, senolytic? Do you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do, do you uh, take it once a month? Do you, do you pulse it or is it regular? Nope, every day. So every day. I, I only take one capsule a day though of the Fisitin. 
um, or right. fisetin, depending where you're from. Um, and yeah, so I, I just take one capsule a day, 400 milligrams. Um, and then as I, uh, when I get a little bit older, I might increase that. Um, but I don't think there's any concrete data yet to say that it's best to pulse it. Um, I know that there was the Mayo Protocol. They've, they've looked at doing it that way, but there's no there's no conclusive proof. So I'm uh, I'm going to continue taking uh, fisetin every day. There, there does seem to be, compo you know, opposing ideas about that. Mm. Um, what, that it it actually has other benefits apart from just being a senolytic fisetin. I think mm. it, it it helps with uh, cognition and so on. But but yeah, yeah, it, and it also. It also mildly activates sirtuin one and I think sirtuin three. Don't quote me on that. Um, so yeah, there's there are uh, more benefits to it. Right. Uh, actually, a question I forgot to ask you on cert six. What is the best time mm. to take cert six activator? So I, I think the, the first thing I would say about that is make sure you get into a routine with it. That's the important thing: is to make sure that you're taking it every day. That's the most important thing. After mm. that, there are some things that might be slightly better so for example i split my dosage up so i'll take it after a meal um twice a day so i'm taking four capsules a day so i'll take two after my first meal and then two after my sort of lunchtime meal right and so like uh, after the meal seems to be better yes it looks that way but again like i say that the, the real key is for each individual person to get into a routine and for them to stick to that routine. Um, so even if you don't take it with a meal or if you want to take them all together in one batch, that is better than trying to do it in the recommended way and then missing days and going off kilter. So what is your personal protocol like? I mean, we, we kind of covered some of it, right? But, but can you talk yep. in, in more detail about what, what you actually, what, what your protocol looks like? So I guess the easiest thing to do from a do not age dog perspective is to tell you what I don't take. Um, and that would be the NR because I choose NMN as my NAD booster, but obviously fully respect people that, that choose the opposite. And there are some people that just take sort of one capsule of both <laughs> covering the bases. Um, and I also don't take the short sleep product because I tend not to have issues with my sleep. So uh, right. they would be unnecessary, but I, I take everything else. Um, I am taking astaxanthin at the moment as well. Obviously, that's from a, another brand until we until we have ours sorted. Um, and then I think the important thing again is trying to. It's difficult when you're traveling so much, but it's about trying to get into a routine. So I always try and work out in the mornings, have a high protein meal after that, um, along with a lot of supplements because it also has fat in that meal. Um, and then eat again, maybe around the middle of the day and then try and fast until the next day. And of course, that's not always possible. You know, tonight, for example, I'm here in Abu Dhabi. I've got a meeting. I'm going to go have a meal in the evening, probably have a beer as well. Um, but, you know, I think if you try and try and get into the routine as, as best as you can. Um, and of course, but again, it's about quality of life. So, you know, people yeah. shouldn't starve themselves of everything, but it's about knowing how and when to do it and uh, when to have a bit of fun and when to actually yeah. focus on your health. Right. So what kind of exercise do you do? So I tend to stick to resistance training. I'm, I'm looking at introducing some more mobility exercises moving mm -hmm. forward because I just I do a lot of weights. But um, again, because I've seen the data on it and because I, probably, because I quite enjoy it as well. But the things that you enjoy aren't always going to be best for you. Um, but I would definitely recommend everybody introduce resistance training. I think some people get scared when you say it because they imagine like a beefcake in the gym lifting 300 kilos um but it's not you know whether if you're a 85 year old small lady maybe you start with a tin of beans and you're just lifting those up it's any kind of resistance is fine uh, resistance bands are readily available online they're really useful as well um, so yeah that's what i tend to stick to i don't do too much cardio anymore i did a lot of that when i was younger playing things like um football or soccer, whatever your audience refers to it as, mm. um, various other sports. But yeah, I, yeah, I tend to stick to resistance training uh, at the moment, and I'm going to be looking to introduce some mobility exercises as well, because I've found that I'm actually, my joints aren't actually very flexible. Mm -hmm. um, because again, if you don't, if you don't use it, you lose it, right? So yeah, because, I, because I'm not really using the, the flexibility too much. Uh, I, I don't have too much of it. So I'm going to be working on that. So next time we have the uh, next time we have a chat, then uh, you'll have, you have to ask me how flexible I am. <laughs> As you're afraid. Yes, it, that is definitely something I do is, is stretching. I 
definitely. Mm. As you get older, you get tighter. Uh, how about uh, meditation or uh, helping with your stress? Yeah, so I think that's one where I'm probably uh, I'm probably not up to speed as I should be. Um, I still do have quite a lot of stress, but that's because I see the aging problem as a big problem, and I put a lot of pressure on my shoulders to help solve it. Um, so I think you know a little bit of stress isn't too bad, but you know every now and then sometimes it does go too much, and obviously you have to try and control that. We know that stress is similar to inflammation, it's, it has a negative impact on pretty much every ailment uh, known to man. So yeah, um, I don't meditate or anything like that, but I do have a few go-tos where, you know, I can say, right, I need to calm down here. I need to have five minutes. Usually just going for a walk helps me out, right. you know, just go, go outside, get in the sunshine. Even if it's a 10 minute walk, just go for a brisk walk back inside. And then it's like, right, you know, the world's not ended. We can carry on. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. So changing tack. So for Cert 6, would there be any mm. biomarkers that you could measure to kind of show uh, like a, a, an effect rather than how you feel? So th there are, but again, because it's such an upstream um intervention it would be very difficult so you've got things like telomere length because we know it protects telomeres um you've got things like inflammatory markers because we know it is a huge anti-inflammatory reduces inflammation um from a dna repair perspective i think that would be extremely difficult to measure um, that's not to say it's impossible but right. i certainly don't know of any at the moment yeah. uh is there anything that you think i missed that you would like to talk about I don't know. I mean, that I, I could talk about longevity uh, for 24 hours straight and, and, and still have more to say. So, no, I'm, uh, I'm more than happy with that. I think it's, you know, it's great to see that you're uh, talking about these things on the channel and educating people. So thank you for that. If any of your audience have any questions, maybe drop them in the comments and then we can do this again in a few months time. I'd be, be more than happy that, to do that. And obviously by then we're going to have more research updates. Uh, maybe the urolithinase is going to be a bit further along, things like that. So um, so, Alan, thank you so much for joining us today. And uh, that was great talking to you. Thanks, Richard. I really appreciate it. Take care.